Welcome, my name is Margaret Wildridge and I'm the instructor for the Introduction to Thermodynamics class. I wanted to start by giving you a brief introduction to who I am. I'm a professor in the Mechanical Engineering Department here at the University of Michigan. I also hold an appointment in the Aerospace Engineering Department. To give you some background on how I spend my time, my research interests are in comp combustion and propulsion systems. I also work in the transportation and stationary power generation. In particular, we're interested in developing new methods to improve efficiencies and reduce the impact of emissions and pollutants on, of these systems on the environment. And in this class, we'll be talking about these areas and they are directly relevant to thermodynamics and your thermodynamic skills can be used to explore these systems. And we'll show you some of those skills in this class. Now, first we need to discuss what is thermodynamics all about? And I have to say, this is one of the most powerful topics that you will ever explore. Thermodynamics is a study of transferring energy, obtaining energy, transferring energy, and applying energy. So you can see all sorts of applications of energy transfer around you. And we'll develop skills and analytical tools that allow us to understand and quantify those systems. So to be very specific, we're going to talk about topics of mass and energy conservation principles, We'll look at first law analysis and as they apply to open and closed systems. We'll investigate and define properties that allow us to explore these systems. And we'll look at the behavior and application of specific thermodynamic systems um, at steady state conditions. So our course objectives are to familiarize you with these basic concepts, the concepts of state relations and conservation principles. We're going to teach you how to quantify the state of simple, pure substances, including all three phases, solid, liquid, and gas phases. I'll teach you how to evaluate energy, work, and heat transfer processes and how those processes interact. We're going to investigate the conservation laws for mass and energy systems, and we'll apply those to example systems so you can have some understanding, particularly for stationary and transportation power sectors. Um, what are the units involved, what are the numbers involved, quantities, and scale. And we'll teach you the application of process knowledge to analyze complete systems. Those are our course objectives. Here are the course outcomes. So after taking this course, you should be able to identify subsystems. You should be able to indicate whether or not there's work transfer, heat transfer, and what's the importance of the thermodynamic state for those systems in terms of temperature, pressure, density, and other thermodynamic variables. Given a set of properties, you should be able to identify the phase and the remaining properties for a substance. If I give you a physical setup, for example, if it's an engine, a jet engine, or if it's a stove, you should be able to determine what are the work and heat transfer mechanisms and what are the most reasonable approximations that you can make to analyze the system. Once you have that physical setup, the device and the process, you should be able to compute, to quantify the rates of work and heat transfer as well. You should be able to formulate an ideal approximation as well as understand how an actual system might differ from an ideal system. And given an actual device, you should be able to correspondingly create an ideal device. So we can have both real and actual systems and we should understand quantitatively what are the differences between real and actual systems. And we should understand how energy processes affect the environment. To help us understand and accomplish these course objectives, we're going to use some references and tools that are freely available on the internet. So those are listed here on this slide. Um, the first is the U.S. Department of Energy Fundamental Handbook on Thermodynamics, Heat Transfer, and Fluid Flow. In reality, there are three handbooks here in this series. We're only going to use the thermodynamics portion of that set. There's a thermodynamics and chemistry second edition that was written by Howard DeVoe. Um, he provided that textbook free um, on his website, and that link is shown here. And the third resource that we'll use is an online calculator for steam, in other words, water, um, properties, which includes also properties for carbon dioxide and ammonia. There are many online calculators that are available to you. This just happens to be the one that I chose for this course. You're welcome to use whatever tools you find the easiest um, for you to accomplish the goals of this class. The weekly reading assignments are what we'll discuss next, and they're shown in this course schedule. 
So all the reading material is from those two reference texts, the U.S. Department of Energy Thermodynamics Handbook and the Thermodynamics and Chemistry Handbook by Professor DeVoe. So the chapters and reading pages are listed here and the topics are listed here that we'll be going through throughout the eight weeks of this course. We're going to start with the basics. So we need some tools in order for us to analyze these uh, thermodynamic systems, these energy transfer systems. And that includes concepts, definitions, and units. We'll have a good discussion of units very early on in this course. Once we have that information, we can start defining thermodynamic properties. And in particular, we'll look at how we can measure temperature and pressure, how we can describe the states of different systems and processes and pathways that connect us to different thermodynamic states. After that, we'll discuss the energy of a system, the first law of thermodynamics, which is the conservation of energy, heat and work transfer, energy analysis of closed and open systems, and how those energy transfer systems use energy, enthalpy, and internal energy. And that will be it. We'll do many examples throughout the class so that you have some idea of how to apply these tools. And this reading material is really meant to support the lectures and the content that we have um, right now that we provide in these lectures. Some frequently asked questions. We'll try and answer those right now. What are the prerequisites for taking this class? You should have some introductory background in chemistry and physics and calculus. Uh, this is going to be important for understanding some of the thermodynamic principles and the calculus is necessary for some of the, uh, for some of the analysis that we do. Specifically, you should understand how to integrate or differentiate, a question, uh, differentiate an equation. What will this class prepare me for? Well, thermodynamics in the academic world is a prerequisite for many other follow-on courses, like heat transfer, internal combustion engines, stationary power generation, propulsion and gas dynamics are just a few classes that build on the foundation we will establish in thermodynamics. In the real world, Energy is one of the top challenges we face in a global society. We know that energy demands are deeply tied to the other major challenges, which include poverty and health and clean water. And understanding how energy systems work is key to understanding how to meet global needs for energy. And because energy demands are only going to increase, this course provides a foundation for many rewarding professional careers. Now, Based on what we just briefly talked about, how thermodynamics is the study of energy, transforming, applying, obtaining energy, I'd like you to pause for a moment and look around you, or maybe look out the window, and identify five systems where you think energy and energy transfer mechanisms are important. And when we come back, we'll discuss a few of those examples. Thank you and welcome to the class.